Hey everybody, welcome back to One Hour RV. On this week's episode, we're gonna go ahead and change out the kitchen faucet for one that just fits us a little bit better. Remember, if you wanna learn more and make less mistakes while RVing, be sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like and a comment down below. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the kitchen faucet or the one that Keystone put in the Montana. It's a great faucet. I personally like it. It's nice. Um, but my girlfriend wanted uh, the same one that we had in our last house, which is just a little bit more industrial, a little bit bigger. And uh, so I got, went ahead and went to Home Depot and got a new faucet and everything I need to go and get that project done. Every RV manufacturer puts things together a little bit differently. So this is just what I'm going to show you how I did it here in the Keystone, Montana. I also have another video, which I'll go ahead and link up in the corner for you to take a look at as well. That was uh, when I replaced the kitchen faucet in my Heartland Big Country. Totally different process, totally different fittings. Uh, I did it differently. So go to the, that video to see another way of getting something like this done. Because my PEX lines are right there and now I've been working with PEX several times, I decided to, instead of messing with adapters to go from the RV style uh, sink faucet to a more residential style, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the PEX tubing and replace it with new quarter turn uh, valves. So to get this project started, we're gonna go ahead and initially we're gonna go ahead and turn off uh, all water to the to the RV, which I'm not hooked up to city water or anything like that. I'm just running off the water pump. So we're gonna turn the water pump off. We're gonna open up the kitchen faucet. We're gonna drain both the hot and the cold lines and turn the hot water heater off. The reason you wanna turn the hot water heater off is because the hot water heater, if you actually have it active and it's real, real hot water going through there, even if you have the water uh, pump off, that water heater creates pressure because of how hot the water is and it'll just constantly drip, drip, drip the whole time I'm doing this project. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut it off. Now our water heater is off, our drains, or excuse me, our lines are nice and drained out of the faucet. It's time to go ahead and disconnect the old faucet and get it removed. To remove your old faucet, for, of course, you have two water lines and then the main stem that comes through the countertop. So we're gonna go ahead and remove each water line one at a time, um, which in my case was just a simple hand twist. I didn't need a wrench or anything like that. So we go ahead and get those loose, get those taken out. And then after that, we're gonna reach up underneath the sink uh, to the bottom side of the faucet stem. And there's two Phillips screws that are creating a lot of pressure. So we're gonna go ahead and back those screws off and then lefty loosey, righty tighty, we're gonna take that uh, ring right off that holds the faucet stem to the countertop. With our faucet stem, or excuse me, with our faucet lines uh, disconnected and the stem nice and loose and our uh, ring disconnected from that, we can go ahead and remove the old faucet. We're gonna go ahead and get everything nice and cleaned up. So I'm gonna use some CLR here on the real nasty grimy part of the faucet that met the countertop that can never be cleaned. So we're gonna get that nice and clean before putting the new one on. Now we're all cleaned up. We are ready to get the next uh, or the new faucet in place. So we're gonna go ahead and initially get the, there's a little ring that uh, goes on the bottom side um, where it meets the countertop to give it a nice seal. So we're gonna get that in place, which goes over the two water lines and over the stem. And then we're gonna go ahead and feed it through the countertop down to the bottom so that we can connect our water lines and get everything connected from the bottom side. Once you have everything fed to the underside of the sink, you can go ahead and get on the rings, the, the rubber gasket, the metal ring, and the actual twist ring um, fed over the water lines and to the faucet stem. So we're gonna go ahead and get that done, which again was the rubber, uh, rubber seal, followed by a metal ring, and then the other metal ring that actually um, twists onto the valve stem. Once we have those nice and tight, we're gonna go ahead and reach up and get the uh, Phillips screws that are on there tightened up because that is what actually really sucks it down and holds it to the countertop. So we're gonna go ahead and get those tight. Now that's done, we are ready to go ahead and get our new lines connected to the existing PEX piping. Like I said earlier, we're gonna go ahead and just replace the end fittings that are on the PEX piping. So we're gonna use some PVC cutters to make a nice clean cut on our existing PEX pipe. Get rid of the old female, um, I think they're about three quarter inch, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna get rid of the old um, female threaded piece that's on there, and we're gonna replace it with a PEX to angle stop valve um, piece that I bought from Home Depot. And again, I'm putting a link in the description below where you can buy all this stuff, but I bought it all from Home Depot. We're gonna go ahead and take our cold line and get a new PEX uh, ring on there. And then we're gonna get the angle 
or stop valve pressed in. And now we go ahead and get this tightened on here. Now that's on there, I can actually go ahead and just turn that and we're good to go. Let's go ahead and get the hot line done. Now we can connect our faucet water lines, cold to obviously the blue cold line and the other one that is unlabeled to the hot PEX line. So, and again, I just hand tighten those. I did not use a wrench on them because they already have a rubber gasket. So I just give them a good crank with my hand. I did not use a wrench on them, but you can, if you, if you desire, just don't over tighten them. They don't need to be very tight. Once you're done with that, we're ready to go and check for leaks. So we're going to turn, in my case, I turn my water pump back on and check for leaks at those fittings and make sure that not only my PEX connection doesn't leak, but also the part that I just screwed on isn't leaking as well. Now we have no leaks. We are connected. Our sink, or excuse me, our faucet has been tightened down to the countertop. The lines are connected to uh, the water lines. Everything's good to go. Now it's just time to use it and enjoy. That's really it for this project. It's really a very simple thing to do. I went to Home Depot this morning. I bought the faucet. I bought the PEX pipe that, uh, fittings that I needed, as well as uh, the crimp rings. Um, I already had a PEX crimp tool and I already had a PVC cutting tool, but that's really all I needed. I'm going to put a link in the description below to where you can buy all this stuff if you want to order it. But again, I just went to Home Depot. Now, if you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments below and I will do my best to respond to them. Uh, thanks for watching Why Not RV. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, drop a like. We'll see you next time. Bye.